Good morning, and welcome to worship this morning. Here we are, the beginning of May. I know lots of mixed emotions today, uh, wondering uh, when we'll be able to gather again in this space. So we thank you for your patience, your prayers, and your support in that process. If there's anything we can do to make this experience um, worship at home a little bit easier, uh, we can email you the bulletin ahead of time. We also now are currently making CDs. Uh, if you know of anybody who would like to watch it at home but doesn't have access to internet, uh, please let us know how we can support you in your worship experience. Our council will be meeting tomorrow evening. Uh, we will start that discernment process of what it might look like um, as we prepare uh, to safely uh, reopen the building and what that will look like. We'll keep you informed uh, through Facebook, through text, through email. Um, but if you have any questions or concerns, please don't hesitate to call myself or to contact any of the council members. We continue uh, with our focus on Acts uh, and following along with the Bishop's Bible Study online on the Synod website. We encourage you to follow along each week with us uh, by reading ahead. Um, right now we are on the third week of the Bishop's uh, Bible Study, and we also encourage you uh, to find a friend and to maybe study at home together with them. Also for our prayer requests, for our prayers of praise, pain, and protest. If you would like to post them online at any time, uh, we will lift them up in our worship service later in the service if you'd like to post your prayer concerns so that we can be praying for one another. I did receive <clears throat> excuse me, an added prayer request already um, yesterday uh, from Erica Pointer. She asked for prayers for her friends, for the family of Barb uh, Sirtis, who uh, died this week from cancer treatments. Now let us prepare our hearts and our minds to worship Christ together this morning. We'll now have the ringing of Trinity's bell. We gather here to worship together in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, so we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us now take a time of silence to confess our sin in the presence of God 
and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us. And for his sake, God forgives all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all of your sins. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And, and also, also with, with you. you. In peace let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to God's people on earth. For God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of our Father, our God. Invite us to pray the prayer of the day together and let us pray. O oh God, God, our, our shepherd, shepherd, you know your sheep by name and lead us to safety through the valleys of death. Guide us by your voice that we may walk in certainty and security to the joyous feast prepared in your house through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. In our story today, in Acts, word is getting out, the good news about Christ's love and compassion and forgiveness. So 
this little group of disciples is now growing and expanding. And you would think that would be great news, right? Well, a group of them within the larger group feel as though the other part of the group is not paying attention to those in need in the community, the widows. And so there's this debate that happens where one side thinks that they should be focusing on prayer and reading God's word, and the other feels as though they should be out in the community serving those who need help the most. Hmm. Sound familiar to any of you at home? I know in our house, when we put out the good news that it's family chore day, <laughs> and we put out who would like to vacuum and who would like to dust, um, there's often a debate that happens. Um, growing up as a, a kid in my house, um, I didn't have that debate. I was the only kid. So on one hand, it was good. There was no debate. On the other hand, I had to do both. <laughs> So when we think about the Holy Spirit, the spirit of compassion, what I love that the Hebrew Christians model finally for these new um, Greek Christians is to pray for them and to bless them and to send them out, that we don't always have to agree, that we could use our spiritual gifts to bless those who feel called in their ministry to go out and do about uh, their good work. And I think that's a great model for us today in these trying times where everyone's debating which direction we should go into, that we can be united in Christ by the power of the Spirit. So invite us now um, to take a time of prayer, to pray for the Spirit to guide us. Let us pray. Good and gracious God, we thank you for the power of your Holy Spirit that unites us, that equips us, helps us to identify what our unique gifts are, and sends us out to do those unique gifts. Help us, Lord, to stay united despite our differences. Bless the children as they serve in their households and serve their neighbors. Keep them safe and bring renewed hope and joy into their lives. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. <coughs> The first reading is from Acts 6, verses 1 through 7. Now during those days when the disciples were increasing in number, the Hellenists complained against the Hebrews because 
their widows were being neglected in the daily distribution of food. And the twelve called together the whole community of the disciples and said, It is not right that we should neglect the word of God in order to wait on tables. Therefore, friends, select from among yourselves seven men of good standing, full of the spirit and of wisdom, whom we may appoint to this task, while we, for our past, will devote ourselves to prayer and to serving the word, what they said pleased the whole community. And they chose Stephen, a man full of faith and of the Holy Spirit, together with Philip, Prochorus, Nicanor, Timon, Parmenas, Nicholas, and Antioch. They they had these men stand before the apostles, who prayed and laid their hands on them. The word of God continued to spread. The number of the disciples increased greatly in Jerusalem, and a great many of the priests became obedient to the faith. The word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. The responsive reading for today is from Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not be in want. The Lord makes me lie down in green pastures, and leads me beside still waters. You restore my soul, O Lord, and guide me along right pathways for your name's sake. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, and my cup is running over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. The second reading is from 1 Peter 2, verses 19 through 25. Doing the right things does not guarantee that one will not experience difficulties, hardships, rejection, or even suffering. Here Christ is presented as the model for our path of endurance and loyalty to God, particularly amid adversity. It is a credit to you if, being aware of God, you endure pain while suffering unjustly. If you endure when you, ha- when you are beaten for doing wrong, what credit is that? But if you endure when you, are, when you do right and suffer for it, you have God's approval. For to this you have been called, because Christ also suffered for you, leaving you an example so that you should follow in his steps. He committed no sin, and in no deceit was found in his mouth. When he was abused, he did not return abuse. When he suffered, He did not threaten, but he entrusted himself to the one who judges justly. He himself bore our sins in his body on the cross, so that, free from sin, we might live for righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed. For you were going astray like sheep, but now you have returned to the shepherd and guardian of your souls. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to John, the 10th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, Very truly I tell you, anyone who does not enter the sheepfold by the gate, but climbs in by another way, is a thief and a bandit. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep hear his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes ahead of them, and the sheep follow because they know his voice. They will not follow a stranger, but they will run from him because they do not know the voice of strangers. Jesus used this figure of speech with them, but they did not understand what Jesus was saying to them. So again, Jesus said, Very truly I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. 
All who came before me are not thieves and bandits, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters by me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came so that you may have life and have it abundantly. This is the good news for you this day. Praise to you, O Christ. They had men stand before the apostles. They prayed for them by laying their hands on them. At the beginning of the first church in Acts, this was their spiritual practice. This is how they equipped leaders to go out with the Holy Spirit to be Christ's witnesses. They laid their hands on each and every person and prayed over them. Now here we are, some 2,000 years later, and we are surely praying for one another, but no one dare put their hands on another person in fear of spreading the virus. Yet, just simply 30 years ago, I also witnessed in the church that I grew up, the pastor would lay his hand on the confirmand's shoulder, but most of them never came back either. Maybe they got some strange virus too. That was supposed to be a joke, <laughs> but that's the strange thing about how we are worshiping together today. I can't tell if you're laughing with me at home or now you're angry at me, or maybe You've been crying with me this week because, frankly, I think most of us have had all those emotions and spiritual practices this week. Laughter, anger, and tears. I don't need God to lay his hands on me right now. I need God to give me a new heart right now. Lord, show us how to love in this new way of being together. So if we look back to the first church and how they began, I think that's maybe what the disciples were wrestling with also as they began to experience growing pains. The Hellenists, the Greek Jewish Christians, felt as though the disciples needed to pay more attention to those who need help the most, the powerless, the unheard, the widows. But there was another group who felt they shouldn't stop praying and teaching about the Holy Scriptures just to care for this tiny, small group of people because there were so many people with so many needs. This story that occurred in Acts over 2,000 years ago, and yet it feels as though we are having the same conversation today, doesn't it? How do we help? What are the essential practices that will help most people? Who are the essential people we should be focusing on? You see, these are not new questions. In Acts, they were having the same growing pains, and the more people that wanted to witness Christ's love, the problem is, the more opinions you're going to have about how to share Christ's love. So we shouldn't view this time as a negative or divisive time in our culture. We should view it as a time and opportunity to discern together how to share Christ's love together. The problem is no one was asking this question how do we equip one another to listen to the Holy Spirit to be Christ's witnesses? This is the essential question that Bishop Daniel raises for us in his Bible study this week. Are we equipping one another to listen to the Holy Spirit 
and to be witnesses of God's mission every week. Maybe during this time that we are away from one another physically on Sundays, this challenges us to ask this difficult question. If you were not able to come back to this building to worship, would you feel ready and equipped to still go out and share Christ's love by the power of the Holy Spirit guiding you? Because what I am hearing from you all is that you are already doing this. Just this week, I witnessed a small group who continued to pray together through the gift of Zoom. Just this week, I witnessed you trying a new thing by worshiping with us online through Facebook. Maybe worshiping with more people online than we would in this building. And just this week, I have witnessed several thank you cards that have come into Trinity to say thank you to you for supporting the Auglaise County Crisis Center, the Auglaise County Board of Disabilities, thanking you for not forgetting them. Just this week, the Holy Spirit has been moving and calling each and every one of us to share our gifts, to be witnesses of Christ's compassion to others. But I have to wonder, how have you witnessed the Holy Spirit showing compassion to you? Because I believe together we are about to face the next greatest big challenge by creating a new normal together. What will that really look like? Who will be the ones serving? Who will be the ones praying? Who will be the ones leading? And who are those who will be stuck at home feeling as though they are alone waiting? What gives me hope this week is that we aren't the only ones that have been asking these kinds of questions of God. The first group of Christians asked these same questions, and what they realized is this. They don't all have to agree. They don't all have to practice the same spiritual practices to be united as Christ's witnesses. For the Greek Christians, it was important for them to serve the widows. For the Hebrew Christians, they didn't say, no, you shouldn't do that because that's not what we do. Instead, they did what they do. They laid their hands on them and prayed for them, and they sent them out with their blessing. But just because they received that blessing didn't mean it was going to be all roses and sunshine either. They prayed over them. They blessed their leader, Stephen, a man full of faith, a man full of the Holy Spirit, the Bible says. But he is also the same man who's put on trial for those same spiritual practices and brutally killed for his faith. Yet the Hebrew Christians didn't say, see, I told you so. The Hebrew Christians didn't say, see, everyone must go back to the way we used to practice our faith. No, instead we read, the Holy Spirit led the disciples out of Jerusalem. And they all began spreading the good news of Jesus Christ through the countryside. You see, they began a new normal together as God's people. My fellow disciples of Christ, equipping you to pray and to respond to the Holy Spirit's guidance and to serve the poor today is not easy, especially when we can't do it together in community like we like or in face-to-face. So whether you choose to stay at home and pray or to go out and serve your neighbors, 
That doesn't mean that God is always going to protect you either way from hardships or dealing with difficult people or dealing with difficult diseases that might threaten our livelihood. I can tell you, as your pastor, I definitely do not feel equipped at this time to tell each and every single person if they should be the one that should go out or they should be the one to stay at home. So my dear friends, please stop asking me to say so. That is a decision that you and your family can only discern for yourselves. But as your pastor, something I am struggling with and working on and will continue to work on by the power of the Holy Spirit is equipping each and every one of you to discern what the power of the Holy Spirit is calling you to do as God's witnesses. Is the Holy Spirit nudging you to wait and pray? Is the Holy Spirit nudging you to see the most vulnerable in our community in need and to respond? As we heard this morning from Acts, both choices are gifts of the Holy Spirit. Only you can make what is the best choice for you. So no matter if you feel the Holy Spirit calling you to pray and to serve, the question I really, again, want you to wrestle with this week is this. How will you be showing yourself Christ's compassion this week? How will you show yourself Christ's compassion this week? Because just this week, I have heard of families getting their children's Bibles out together, and guess what? Letting the kids be the Sunday school teachers, and the kids get to teach the adults about what they know about God's love. And just this week, I heard of friends calling up one another on the phone to go through the bishop's Bible study together. And just this week, I heard of people in our community willing to volunteer to serve meals, to work at the local food pantries, and also to pray over each and every person that walks through their door. So to my fellow essential workers in God's kingdom together, I can tell you right now, the pay is not going to be good. I can tell you right now, the hours are going to seem like they never end, and the journey is not going to be straightforward, because there's no map, or a perfect plan, or even a secret message in a bottle that says, go here. But to my essential workers in God's kingdom, we have something more powerful than any of those tools. We have a wiser friend and better advice than you could ever receive from the President of the United States, from our own governor, and even from your own pastor. What you have, my friends, is the power of Christ's Holy Spirit with you. What you have is the power of Christ's compassion with you. What you have is the power of Christ's grace and love with you every day. So as I reach up my hands and pray for you, I want to say thank you. Thank you for doing God's good work this week and being God's essential workers in God's kingdom. May God bless you and keep you. Amen.
I invite you to stand as you are able at home with us, and let us confess our faith together using the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Let us now pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and all people according to their needs. Thank you, God. Thank you for giving us the power of your Holy Spirit to align us with your purpose today. Thank you, God, for all the many essential workers in your kingdom today, sharing your grace and your compassion and your love for others. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Sorry, God. Sorry that we become divided, make judgments about others and even ourselves. Sorry when we don't claim our brothers and sisters who choose a different way of being. Therefore, Lord, shepherd us through this dark valley. Equip us with your Holy Spirit. Help us to shepherd the sick and the lonely, the widows and the hungry. Give us your patience, God, and strengthen us to persevere together until we see your kingdom come. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. And please, God, please send the breath and the power of your Holy Spirit to renew our faith in you and our faith in one another. We praise you, Lord, for those celebrating birthdays and anniversaries this week, and we lift up to you. Liliana, Tim, Melinda, Ken and Ann, Aileen and Pat, Jerry and Deb, Don and Betsy. We pray, Lord, you bless their relationship with you and bless their relationship with one another. We also pray, Lord, for your healing hand and peace to be with those in need, and we pray for David, Lila, Braxton, Pam, Gary and Sandra, Rayanne, Craig, Cindy, Autumn, our brothers and sisters at Redeemer Lutheran Church, and the far family of Barb Sirtis. We lift up the armed forces and all those you put upon our hearts today. We name out loud or silently. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We lift up all these spoken and unspoken prayers, trusting in your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you all. And also with you. I invite you to share a sign of peace with those at home or those online, you can post uh, Christ's peace with one another. So God's peace. For our tithes and offerings today, we'd like to highlight different organizations in our community who are doing some good work right now. And we want to thank you for your gifts and donations that you are mailing in or are donating on our GoFundMe page for the Community Chest of Hope. This week we want to give thanks for the Agape Ministry in St. Mary's. I talked to the leader this week. They will be opening um, their store again on May 12th. And so they're going to need some volunteers and help as they receive lots of donations that people are willing to give for people on Saturdays from 9 to 2 throughout the months of May and June. So that's one way if you feel healthy and safe and able to volunteer, we encourage you to contact Agape and they will let you know how you can volunteer on a Saturday to help go through donations. I also asked what donations they're low on that they could receive some donations in two areas where you can help. The first is pasta, pasta in a box, pasta in a can. Um, all kids love pasta. 
So if you would like to donate some pasta, the second item is peanut butter, of course. Lots of kids like peanut butter. So those are two areas. If you would like to um, donate, you can drop those off at Agape as well. So let us give thanks to God for these offerings and your generosity. Let us pray. Blessed are you, O God, ruler of heaven and earth. Day by day you shower us with many blessings. As you've raised us to new life in Christ, give us now glad and generous hearts, ready to praise you and respond to those in need. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Now I invite us to pray our Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. God now blesses us and sends us out in mission into the world. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen. Jesus said to them, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, now God is sending us.